Hi guys. Blake here today with Lily's Landing Resort and Marina on beautiful Upper Lake Tanicomo. It is Saturday, February the 12th. It's 1.30 in the afternoon and I'm gonna do the one cast for you today. Oh, so today we're sitting right on the edge of the Narrows, right above it. Um, it is uh, maybe 30 degrees, maybe. I've got Today, I'm gonna to be using an orange egg. I got a size 12 rainbow gray scud. That is a BB size split shot, about 20 inches above the first fly, and those two flies are about eight inches apart. And then about eight or nine foot above that, I've got a medium size airlock indicator. I'm gonna to try to get drift in here real quick because we still have some running water. It is dying quickly though, so. Blake Harris above me with a guide trip right now. And uh, I'm gonna leave there throwing the micro jigs. They're kind of spot locked out there in the center right above the narrows. Got a nice constant wind going, so that should be to their advantage today. I'm hoping that the split shot I put on here is heavy enough to do the job. With this wind blowing me back upstream, should be should be just enough. Oh, they were for the last four hours running two units of water. And uh, it was supposed to go off at noon. It looks like they ran it until one and then started to kill it, so. We're just gonna go ahead and say nothing officially on the first cast. I'm gonna pull this in and set it just a touch deeper. I always want the distance between my indicator and my split shot. To be enough to go to the bottom and then I want that extra 20 or more inches uh, to be coming back up off the split shot and kind of waving around in the current a little bit. Oh, might have been a fish. Uh, Captain Jeremy Raznick told me that uh, this morning when the Water started running, they threw the uh, Signature Series 110 plus one juvenile rainbow pattern. And uh, they caught a real nice brown. Looked like it was over 20 inches. I'm hoping this current in the narrows is just the right speed because it always does run a little faster right here. Oh. 
thinking I'm gonna point the nose of the boat downstream just because I need to keep pushing it that way. It's getting a little hard to control the boat. I feel like I get a little more control. Sometimes you just need to, if the wind's blowing upstream real strong, just point your nose down to control that drift speed. A little easier than trying to point the trolling motor head backwards. Essentially, I'm just trying to keep my boat and my indicator drifting at the same speed leave as little line on the water as possible sides of the boat here. Maybe. Definitely colder today. But, uh, yeah, after Captain Rasnick went on a brown trout hunt. They uh, switched over to dragging eggs and scuds on the spin cast rod. That was a fish. They were using the egg in the scud and said it was working good. I capped to talk to Captain Robbie Dotson on my way up here. And they were still drifting the egg and scud under the float. Or sorry, on the spin cast rod under the bottom. On the bottom. Can't get my words right today. Um he said they were still catching some fish, but that uh, with the current dying, it was starting to kill their bite a little bit.
something I like to do, which is exactly what happened, is that I talked about it before, but tying a knot above the split shot. So my split shot slid down here. Um, and I'm gonna just kind of try to tie a knot here to the best of my ability underneath that. So that won't happen again. But what did happen there was my split shot slid all the way down my line all the way to the flies which wasn't leaving any room uh, for those flies to drift and my uh <laughs> my indicator did the same thing which means i didn't get it tight enough so a little bit of failure there on my part So, I uh, tied a knot above my, or right below the split shot so that it can't slide down anymore. And I think I got my bobber tight enough this time. So, hope there was a fish right there as soon as we got it fixed up. Uh, today I'm using uh, the 6x Cortland tippet for my leader material. There's a fish. Like he took the scud.
take my glove off for this. Beautiful little 17 or 18 incher there. Well, it's definitely worth checking your gear every time. Make sure that, uh, that split shot and that indicator are holding where they need to be because we fished the first 10 minutes without stuff working right. I'm gonna get a little bit longer of a cast. There's a there's a mud line over here on this bank. And I bet there are fish sitting right on that mud line. Okay, well, I thought the wind had died down enough to keep the boat drifting nose forward, but I guess not. Water is just about all but stopped now that we're outside of the narrows here.
Well, I think my only options right now would be to go back up into the narrows where the water's still moving a little bit. Um, maybe. And keep hitting that current until it dies all the way out. And even if I went up there right now and redid that drift, I'd probably need to put on a smaller split shot. Uh, just to keep it bouncing along the bottom properly. And... Or switch to a different method. Micro jig or... Keep the scud. Make it smaller and just keep reducing the weight. If that water will be completely off here really quickly. Or, uh, you know, something that was working the other day in the heavy wind like this was throwing a 16th ounce jig out and letting it drag the bottom, letting the wind kind of blow the boat and kind of scooting it along the bottom. And so that's probably something I would try too, but uh, my underlayers for my jeans are not as prepared for today. So I think we're gonna call it with that one, one nice fish. Uh, for today so we thank you guys for watching like and share us on Facebook subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, we'll come back out and do it again tomorrow thanks guys